So, thank you guys so much for coming. It's great to see you. Hope everybody had a beautiful Shavuos. Be'ezer Sashem. We are standing on the threshold of the next step in Kabbalah Shabbos. We've been spending a few months, careful behind you, a few months um, learning about Shabbos Bechlal. We had a couple of shirim just generally on the, on the general basic fundamental concepts of what Shabbos is, all of which we continue to develop as a Hashem throughout the weeks. Thanks for coming. Great to see you. And we spent the past couple of shirim just on Kabbalah Shabbos itself. And now we're up to this part of Kabbalah Shabbos, the tefillah of Anabekoyach, right before the Chadoidi. Now, unfortunately for all of us, or fortunately for all of us, but just I'm telling you what I'm dealing with, the, the struggle and the challenge, is that I have a Sefer at home that's 500 pages on Anabekoyach. The whole, the whole entire Sefer is just on Anabekoyach. It's written by a very, very special, sweet tzaddik called Rav Rubin Sasson, who lives in Eretz Yisrael. He's a Rosh Yeshiva of a Yeshiva in Ram, called Either it's called Ramat Sharon, I think, or it's in Ramat Sharon, And he wrote this whole gigantic Sefer on Anabakar. So I had to go and like figure out how I'm going to give over on it without learning the whole Sefer, which I'd love to do. So I figured we're going to try to limit it to six shirim on Anabakayach. We're going to try. At the, and there's a ton more that I'm cutting out. But I hoped to just be able to capture the essential parts that are going to be practical in terms of our actual kavana that we can have before the Chadoidi, because Anabekayach is a much bigger tefillah than it seems. Okay, our 42 words, which we're, we're going to get into tonight, by way of just introduction. We're not even going to start tonight to look at the actual words of Anabekayach. We're going to do so by way of just translation, just so we know Bechlau, like what, what the tefillah means on a simple level. Next week, we'll start with the first stanza, and then after that, we're going to try to do two stanzas a week until we finish Anabekayach and we go into the Chadoidi, which will probably also take some time. The Torah is endless, you know, so we're trying to make up shara of some kind. Okay, so Be'ezus Hashem, let's first take a look at the tefillah itself. I think we take for granted that we know translations of things, but if we're not really honest with ourselves, we don't. Um, not all the time. And so let's take a look at Anabekayach and just read it through on a simple level. We have the English here. Again, if you'd like to take this with you to shul and, and to look at the English in lieu of a English translation sitter, you're welcome to do so as well. Okay, so let's first read the tefillah through together. Ana bekoyach gedula si mincha. Ana, please, bekoyach gedula si mincha, with the strength and greatness, yimincha, akadosh baruch of your right hand, tatir tsurura. Untie our bounds. And of course, there are many different ways of interpreting these things. What, what are the boundaries? Over here, this translation that I have defined says are bundled sins, right? Because it deals with some kind of bundle. What would we want Hashem to untie? So this interpretation says bundled sins, but we're going to get into a different interpretation. But there are many. Untie the boundaries, the bounds. We're going to get into that next week. Thanks for coming. We have an extra source sheet. More here too. Kabel rinas amcha. Please, Hashem, accept the song of your nation, Sagvenu. Elevate us, Taharenu, purify us, Noira. Kodesh Baruch Hu, you're the awesome one, Noira. No, please, Gibar, mighty one, Darshi, Yechud, Kvava, Shamrin. Guard those who are Darshi, Yechud, who seek your oneness. Guard them, Kvavas, like the pupil of an eye which is always considered to be something that's guarded because it has built in a mechanism for blinking, which means to cover over, to guard, to hide away, to conceal, to shelter. Kavavas shamrim, barachim, bless them, taharim, purify them. And over here there's a little bit of machlokus uh, about what the next word should be. Some say rachame. thanks for coming, we have source sheets here. Some say rachame. some say it should be rachameim. And let's go through the two ways of reading it. First, rachamei tzidkascha tamid gamlim, which would mean constantly repay them, reward them with with your generous righteousness. That's one way of reading it. Or you can read with a mem at the end as the third in the series of words. So barchem, bless them, taharem, purify them, rachamem, right? And have mercy on them. And then gamlim. Okay, two ways of reading it. And sometimes in Sidurim you'll see a mark that it, there are two nuschais. The phone one is usually more accepted, no? Yeah? Isn't it? I don't know. Okay, I'm not sure. 
I'm not sure. Okay, but these are these are two two interpretations of, of that line. Chasin, powerful one, Kadesh, holy one. But Raiv Tuvcha, with your great goodness, Nahel Adasecha. What a powerful thing. Nahel Adasecha. Rabbi Shalom, lead us. Lead us. Sometimes we feel that we're not being led. Rabbi Shalom, lead us. Nahel Adasecha. Yachid, singular one. Geya, proud one, lifted one, exalted one. La Amcha Penei. Turn to your nation. Zaycha Kudushasecha. Those who still remember. Your holiness, or like it says over here, those who proclaim your holiness. Shavasenu Kabel, and the last line of the tefillah is, accept our, our tefillah. Ushmat Sakasenu, and hear our screams, our cries. Yedea Ta'alumais. You, HaKadosh Baruch who know the mysteries. Yedea Ta'alumais. Okay, and then the last line isn't really part of it. It's just in the Zar Kaddish, as we'll see when he talks about the Shem Membez, which is this holy name that has 42 letters, which we'll talk about. He brings this at the end because it's a name of Hashem. And that's why you'll see all of the Rosh Hatevis here bolded because these 42 letters, which in Siddurim it's printed at the end of each stanza, you'll see the Rosh Hatevis brought, which we'll, which we'll get into, as is Hashem, both tonight and in future weeks. Thanks for coming. So Rashid's here. The Ezra Hashem. Okay, the last two. Uh, one more? Oh, two more. Okay, we'll be expecting two others then, I guess, I hope. Okay, so, so, Baruch Shem Kavayd Malchus, that means just that HaKadosh Baruch Hu's name should be blessed, the name of his, of his kingdom forever. Okay, that's just the translation of the words. But let's get into the oymik of it, to the depth of it. So I'm bringing a lot from the Sefer, which is also based on Rav Kook, so we're going to be learning also from Rav Kook himself and from the Sefer, which embellishes this incredible peerish of this tefillah, La'at, la'at, step by step. Okay, so we turn over. You should see Kala Lechaim page 70 to 71. And he writes like this. Tfila zu maifia b'tikune azayar ha'kadosh. This tfila appears in the tikune azayar from Rabbi Shimon bar Yechai. He says, Netzat seitz ma'at milushayne ba'ezus Hashem nezbainin ba. He says, let's quote first from the actual Lashon of the Zayar, and then we're going to focus on it and learn it and contemplate it deeply. V'zu l'shayne ha'kadosh. And this is the words of the Zara Kaddish. Come Rabbi Shimon al Ragloi. Va'amar. Rabbi Shimon stood up on his feet and he said, Reboin Almin, master of the world. Eftach enai le astakla bahoin le'ela. Open my eyes. He didn't mean physically. He said, Give me perception that I should see le'ela, the spiritual realm. Avai vam. And he quoted the Pasuk and Telem that says, Pischuli shari tzedek. We say it on Rosh Chaydesh and Halal. Open up for me the gates of righteousness. Avai vam oideka. Avoyvam means I will come into them, and I'll give praise to Hashem. But Rabbi Shimba Yechai says, well, look at that word bum, bum, which is a reference to the gates, but he says it's the letters membeis, which is 42. Now, he says, you know what it means, avoyvam? It doesn't just mean I will come through the gates of righteousness. It means the way to approach HaKadosh Baruch Hu, as it were, and we're going to get into this deeply now, is bum, through the 42 letters of this, of this holy shame. This incredible name of Hashem. But our ba'im betrayin asvan deshva deshma mefurish through the forty-two letters of this explicit name of Hashem. Leminda kol as va'as to really learn and to understand every letter al tikune as is fitting, completely. And then before actually listing the letters, he starts with this pasuk, the first pasuk in the Torah, v'reishes bar likim as Hashemai v'saaretz. And the second pasuk va'aretz ha'isa sayu v'vayu. He doesn't even finish the pasuk. Why? So as we're going to see in the next paragraph, the shem membeis, these forty-two letters, which are the Rosh Tevis of this tefila on are rooted in the first forty-two letters of the Torah, which culminate with the letter beis of v'vayu. So if you start from the first Pasuk, Bereshis, until the base of Vavayu, Tayu Vavayu, there are 42 letters, and those become the root of this 42-letter name. We're not going to read it, obviously, but you can scan it with your eyes. V'inon, all of these letters, Aleph, Beis, Gimel, Yud, Taf, Tzadi, Kufresh, Ayin, some of them are, are words, some of them are Shrashim of words, some of them are Muslim, and we're going to get into this as a Hashem as we take a look at each stanza in the coming weeks. B'siyat with Hashem's help. Okay, and then at the end, like I said, the Zara Kaddish says, Baruch Shem Kavad Malchuse, which is why that's printed at the end of Anabukayach. He says, Vizet Hargumoy in Biyar Kal. Let's understand the, uh, the translation of the Zara Kaddish. Kam Reb Shimon al Raglov. Va'amar Reb Shimon stood up and he said, Reboin Ha'ilamim, 
master of heaven and earth, master of the world, open my eyes to look up, to look beyond, like we said, that's how we will enter in, to understand these letters clearly. Now these 42 holy letters are are hinted to in the beginning of the Torah. And so on. And he says, Reb Shimon Bar Yechaim Alamid, what's Reb Shimon teaching us? The root of this whole tefillah, which we just translated and you can read it and you wouldn't necessarily know that it has anything to do with creation. It's just a tefillah. He says it's bound up b'shoyrish with maisei b'reishis. Maisei b'reishis is Rosh Hashanah's membeis. That's the shame membeis. It's maisei b'reishis. It's bound up with the creation of the world, the energy of the creation of the physical world, which we'll explore together tonight. Besides shame membeis, Rama's betchila satar mamish. It's literally hinted to, and it's sourced in mamish, the beginning of the Torah. Right? You will count them and you will find 42 letters. Okay, and here they are again in bold. Interesting, right in the middle of a word. Those 42 letters are the scriptural source for the Shem for the for the letter, for the names of Hashem, the name of Hashem that has 42 letters. Eluhim Ashrashim Batayra Harimuzim Al Shem Membez. And it's the essential mystery and the deep secret to understand the spiritual source for Tfilas Anabakayach, for this incredible Tfilah. Let's take a look at the next paragraph together. And he begins to open up the sugi a little bit. And again, I'm I'm telling you, I, I took small paragraphs here and there. It's a, it's a much bigger sugya, the way that he lays it out. Maybe one day we'll get to learn the Sefer together. It's, it's, a, it's an incredible avoida, incredible, incredible Sefer, which we'll, maybe we'll get to. But he, he just takes little snippets, a little snippet here, I, a little bit I, I tried to put together and capture just the main, the main points. So now, he says, So, Uvda Shashem Zeram was by which we said is also Rosh Hashanah's Membez, right, that this name is rooted in these first 42 letters of the Torah. Malamed as Aysanu teaches us, Shashem Zeh, that this name, Utfilas Anabekayach, Na'utsim Ukshurim Mibriya Sa'ilamais. It's bound up with the concept of the creation of all the worlds until we come down to our physical world. V'yesh Bekach, and what the Torah means to say, is Kedei Lalamdenu, to teach us, Al Inyin HaTfilah Hazu. This is where we need to begin to understand anything about the tefillah is to understand what its spiritual source is. Maisei Bereshis. Shehine Yadua, he says it's known. Shesei Bria Sa'aylam, that the creation of the world, hu dafka pu'ula, shal tsimsum v'hastaras ha'or. A basic foundational concept in Pnimi Yisatar, which we've discussed many times, is that the way that the infinite, which is a Kaddish Baruch Hu, the Ein Sof, creates something finite, is through a very complicated system of what we call constriction. Concealment, constriction, layer after layer after layer, where Hashem's presence becomes more concealed, more concealed, through a very complicated system of light and vessels. And then those vessels become light for the vessels that are beyond them. And then that vessel becomes light, and then another vessel is created. A very complicated system where spirituality becomes more and more and more and more migusham until we have the physical world where we can perceive, which we can perceive as being a separate creation, but in fact is absolutely infused with the spirit of the creator. This is the, called the process of tzimtzum, which means constriction, concealment, garment after garment after garment after garment after garment. This is the essential foundation of the world that we live in, is that it's all an illusion and that inside this multi-layered garment is the presence of a Kaddish Baruch Hu, which brings all of it to life. But it's concealed, it's constricted, it's hidden. The foundation of the physical world is limitation. Limitation. Right? Everything in this physical world is limited. Day and night. The seasons. The directions. Where the land stops and the ocean starts. Everything in the physical world is, is limited, is measurable. Tzimtzum, constriction. Yitziras hakelim 
It's the creation of what's called in Kabbalah, in Chasidas, vessels, and the creation of what we can refer to as being separate worlds. From the perspective where we, we see things through the prism of disparity, multiplicity, where we stop seeing the absolute unity of everything, which is the Avoida, right, that we have in this world, is to unearth the unity, which is the Avoida. We mentioned previous shiurim of Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, really Avram and Yitzchak specifically digging wells, Right, to reveal that underneath the earth is, is just is water. Water is unifying. We're going to learn water is one. And that's our avayda. That's our avayda, is to come to the realization that even though we perceive limitation, the truth is, is that we can sense infinity beyond the illusion of, 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 of a finite, or finitude, right? We can sense infinity here too. Yeah. Yeah, that's for you. The reality that we experience of Chaymer and of Geshem, of, physical, of his physicality and corporeality. Therefore, any name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which talks about what's the name of Hashem, is a revelation of Hashem. It's an encapsulation of the energy that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is manifesting through this name or that name which are the Midos of Hashem if it's a name that's associated with creation it's going to be a name of, of Gevura right? it's not going to be a name of, of Chesed it's going to have to be a name which means a revelation of the concept of limit of lack of constriction limitation Hayoitzer Mesakelim Names that are able to channel the, the, the implicit capacity within the infinite to manifest the limit, right? I mean, HaKadosh Baruch is a very deep concept in Kabbalah. HaKadosh Baruch is so unlimited that he can even manifest limitation. That's how unlimited he is. He's so infinite that he also has the ability to manifest something that's perceived as being finite. Because if he couldn't, so to speak, then that, that itself would be, would be a limitation, right? It's called in Kabbalah, Koya HaGvul Bibilti Gvul. The capacity for limitation within the limitless. That crazily enough, this world, which seems to be something so lowly and so physical and so constricted, becomes the crowning glory of a Kodesh Baruch Hu's manifestation. That's Meaning, what do you want to say? I'm not saying it, because you're referring it as, as a Kodesh Baruch Hu's crowning jewel. This world. This world is mamish. Mamish. This is Ein Melech Beloy Am. Right? This is the this is the, also referred to as Evan Ma'asu Habainim, right? The stone that's despised by the builders. It's a stone, it's physicality, a stone is nothing. It's not it's not even a plant, it's certainly not an animal, it's certainly not a human, it's just a, a stone becomes Hoysil Roshpina. Becomes Mamish, the crowning jewel of a Kurdish Baruch Hu's manifestation. Dafka this, Dafka us. Dafka, our lives in this physical place, in this world. After, after coming to this world. This yes, world. right. Yeah. We're going to have to go through the whole process of, of Anabukach. Absolutely. Thanks for coming. Got the last sheet. Baruch Hashem. Now nobody else can come. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Everyone's welcome. Okay, so that's the name of Gevura. Hayoyitzir Masakelim. These names create the vessels. Mitzamtzim Emesa'oyros. They take all the potentially infinite lights, the infinite spiritual energies of Hashem, and they guide them and constrict them and limit them and channel them in such a way that we can exist within a limited world or a realm of limit. That's the job, so to speak, of the revelation of the names of Hashem that are associated with Gevura. Umachdirim Aysam. Cause these lights, which are essentially explosions of spirituality to become dafka focused umachdirim right focused aysam lenaftule machshake ha'olam into the bonds of the darkness of the of the created world lechein ha'olam never b'shem alekim that's why famously hakadosh baruch hu's name yud kevavke is not found throughout creation only by the creation of adam but the whole creation is just vayemer alekim vayemer alekim what's the shem alekim everybody knows is the name of Gvura. Why? He's explaining. Because that's the context within which these names are found. Is the creation of the physical world. There's nothing more Gvura oriented than that. There's nothing more limit oriented. Elokim famously is Gematria. Hateva is Gematria nature. Olam, the world, is Milashan Ha'elem, which means concealment. That's the job of the shame of Gvura, of the shame Elokim. L'chein again, Ha'elam nivra b'shem Elokim, b'reish is bara Elokim. That's the secret 
of the creation and formation of physicality. So it midas hadin It's the it's the midas hadin. Midas hadin is not just when a person chas v'sham gets gets punished or or something like that or something terrible happens. Din means any sense of constriction. That's what din means, right? When when a person issues exar, a, like a like a base what's a, ba- a base din, right? Give hands down a psak din. It means this person is awarded whatever was being argued over, and this person isn't. It's a it's a focus. Right? It's a it's a limited verdict that can only encompass one and not the other. That's what the concept of din is, is simsim, is limitation, is constriction. So it means had din ba had simsim. He called Mahusa Ilama Hayadafka Hastaras Bihikas are in size. Because the whole process of creation is really just the concealment of the essentially shining and infinitely powerful spiritual light of the Creator as Creator, before descending, so to speak, into this process of creation. So that you and I could, could sit here now and breathe this air and sit on these chairs and not on those chairs, to live within a la- uh, uh, an experience of limitation, here, now. What this means is that El Hanavraim u Madrigasa. The name of Gvura, and he says the Shemois because there are more than one, the names that are associated with Gvura, another name, by the way, that's associated with Gvura is Shakai. What's Shakai? Shakai is Misha Amar lo Elamai Dai. HaKadosh Baruch Hu said, enough, right? Because the, the Medrash says, a very deep thing, that the, that the creation was just expanding and expanding and expanding until Hashem, Hashem says, Dai. It's a, it's a limitation. Atkan. So he says the names of Gvura are names that relate not to godliness as godliness or not even to the spiritual light that comes down into the Kalim, which we'll learn about in a little bit and next week, but to the creation of the vessels in and of themselves, which will then receive the R, which will then receive the light. They are names that relate to the created world or to the reality that you and I experience in the realm of limitation. And he's going to prove that in a minute in a beautiful way. Surely the name Shakai is, is, a, is the name of Rachman because they stopped the Tzimtzum, there's been more Tzimtzum, have they gone on? Rachamim is a very important word you said. Rachamim is not Chesed. Not getting into that whole Sagya now. Yeah, Rachamim yeah. is a mix. No, you no, you use the exact, exactly right word. But you cannot have Rachamim without, without Din. So you're right, there is an element of tremendous Chesed of Shakai. Right. right? By the way, there's an element of tremendous Chesed in all Din. As well, right? Ki gavar aleinu, what we experience as gvura, chazda is, is also chesed. But that gets a little bit more involved. Okay. Let's let's take it step by step. But you're right, absolutely. There's an element of, of chesed, but there's also an element. Of, dai is 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 half the word din, right? Three quarters of the right. It's, it's, that's what, that's literally what dai is. What din is is dai. Okay. Right, that name goes down and supports that place. Poyel that works lihikanes to enter them and to prepare them for the light, which is the light of Chesed. The af and draws the light down into that reality that you and I experience in a realm of limitation. Now, based on all of what we're learning now about what the spiritual foundation for the creation of the world is, which is the nida of gevura and simsim and limitation. So it appears, Ms. Barer, Shashem Mem Beis, which like we said is Rosh Hashem, my Sebracious, not Uds Gamhu, can I open the door if you don't mind, if, if it's not locked? Got some air in here. Uh, it is locked. How about the window behind you? There you go. There you go. That's right. Beautiful. Shkayach. So the Orzois, Ms. Barer, Shashem Mem Beis, not Uds Gamhu, beside Briyas Ha'ilamais. This name of these 42 letters, which are the na- which are the letters that are the foundation for the tefillah and abakayach, are also rooted in this energy, this energy of, of din, of simsim, of limitation. So midas ha This is the name of gvura. Shem membez zeklal is a name of din. It's a name of gvura. Leumas in contrast to the shem ayin bez. There's a name of forty two letters and there's a name of seventy two letters. 72 letter name is going to be associated with chesed. So Shem Membez is Gevura, Shem Ayin Bez is chesed. 
happens to be, uh, happens to be, but Ayin Beis, 72, is the gematria of Chesed. Right? So, Shem Ayin Beis is the name of Chesed. Shem Mem Beis is the name of Gvura. Maise Bereshis. Parenthetically, not getting into this now, because it's not our, our subject, but the name Ayin Beis also has a scriptural source. Do you know where we get the name Ayin Beis from? The, the 72 letters? Kriyas Yamsev. Kriyas Yamsev. Without getting into the whole thing, there are three psukim, Vayisa, Vayava, Vayet, Three psukim that begin with those three words, with those three words, and there's a whole way of, of arranging and coupling the letters of these three psukim, and you get seventy-two letters and these, uh, this name of Hashem, the seventy-two letters. And if you think about it very deeply, we can understand why this would be Chesed and why the name Membez, which is rooted in Barishas Baralikim and so on, is Gevura, because one, the name Membez has to do with the creation of the world. Which seems to be kaseder. It seems to be a chesed, a klape like kriyas yamsov was big, big gvura. But it's not true, right? Because we understand that there's a tremendous gvura in creating the natural order of things. There's a tremendous simsim there. There's a tremendous concealment. What was kriyas yamsov? Kriyas yamsov was literally kriyas. It was the tearing up of that order, and that's why the revelation there is the revelation of chesed. Is the revelation of the shame, ayin base. Okay. So the name Ben Mendes, he says, is now it's Gam who beside Bria Silam and said Midas Hagvura. Upula says Sheikh has Dafgal aside at Simsum and its Puula, its energy, what it accomplishes, has to do with the concept and the secret of constriction, limitation. Yitziras Hakalim, the creation of the vessels, the Yisus Ha'ar Liachilas, and the preparation of this light for Kabbalasam, to be able for these vessels rather to receive that light. And he says, just parenthetically, anytime we speak about Hashem's names, we have to say something like very, very simple. He says, the foundation of any kind of conversation like this is the following. At the foundation of this whole sugya lies the following clear understanding. Everything that happens in the world. Whether it was the original creation, so to speak. Or the recreation or the guidance of the world at every single moment. It's okay, just leave it. But maybe open the window if you can, I guess. If it stays open on its own. There you go, thank you. Hakol mimenu yizbarach. Everything is from HaKadosh Baruch Hu and Hashem's created tools that channel that light of infinity down into our experience all around us, all the time, and within us. How does this work? It's a very intricate system of names. The name of Hashem, Heim Heim, Giluyav Yisbarach Shemay. They are the way that HaKadosh Baruch Hu reveals certain energies through certain names, like the Shem Elohim is... Is the Midah of Gevura, and the Shem Yudke Vavke is the name of Chesed, but there are ten names, right? There are even more Kinuyim, different words that are associated with the names that get into even more detail. All of these names are channels through which HaKadosh Baruch is revealing one facet, and then another facet, and another facet of his unity, of his oneness. The old, the old restrictions, every name is a restriction. In a sense, yes. In a sense. Very, very deep thing. But some relate to the restriction that allows us to perceive Hashem's revelation, and some is mamish, the, the constriction of the constriction. Yeah. But all names are a constriction, absolutely. All names are a constriction. Because in order for a person to have a name that matters in any significant way, there has to be an other right, who can perceive the name of the person, refer to him by the name, call him by the name. And already, once you speak about the concept of a name, why does a thing need a name? Because there's someone else, presumably, who needs to refer to it or call out the name. We spoke about the Shua's night a little bit, right? That's already a tzimtzum. That's Hashem already constricted himself to create the illusion of a separate consciousness that can call him by name. All names are a constriction. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, you're saying... I'm so happy you're here. <laughs> I'm just saying good. We don't have time to get into all the details now, but uh, names are connected to Malchus, which is Simpson, which is David Amalach. The Pasik says, Vayas David Shem. Shem is Kamatra Shechina. Not getting into the whole thing now. Shem is not Kamatra Shechina. Um, there is a connection between Shem and Shechina, which I'm forgetting right now. All of this is, is, uh, is the site of constriction. Shemus. 
The names of Hashem are His revelation. Why do we have so many names of Hashem? There's just different ways that Hashem is revealing Himself. One time through this Midah, one time through that Midah. And each of the Midas is another nuanced reflection of the revelation of Hashem. That's why we have some names like Kel, right, is the name of Chesed. Yudke Vavke is the name of Chesed. There are other names of Chesed. Havayat Svakos is the name of Chesed. Vishem is Hamishrasha Mikvura. And then there are other names that are Mushrash and Gvura. Vachal Echad, and each of these names, Skulais, Pu'ulais, Shaina, Mechavert, it has a different energy and a different purpose than its. Than it's Companion, vihine shem alikim, but we said the name of alikim. He shares ikari laifas Hashem bebechinas gevura v'tzimtzum. That's pretty much the collective name that really represents the midah of gevura is is the name elokim. Elish shares klali zem is stayif la nafim rabim. Right, but this concept of gevura, there are many different nuances of this revelation. Right, of Hashem's midas hadin. Shem Shabbos Rabbi is Hamarumaz and Betayra. The whole Torah is the names of Hashem. The whole Torah is filled with different names of Hashem, and the same is true for Anu B'Koyach. V'kach Shem Lois Anu B'Koyach. Soid Shem Mem Beis. It's more specific than the name Alikim because it is the Mida of Din that relates to the creation Dafka of the natural order of the world. Naotz B'Psuke Bria Sa'elam. It is rooted in and founded upon the Psukim. The first two psukim, the fundamental foundation of the psukim that that tell us of the creation narrative. But so shem of the kim hamayfia boy, which is why, like we said, the name of the kim is, is all over the place in 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 the in the psukim about creation. They miss spartus midas hagvura, and they get into the nuances of the midas hagvura. So taken out of rhyme, the creation of the create of the created world. And the placing them on the levels that are fitting for it. So this is a very, very broad hakdama, just generally speaking. So what we've learned so far is the following, right? Very important. There is a concept of a shame membeis. These 42 letters, which are not the same as the actual 42 letters in the psukim of Barash's bara and the second pasuk, are rooted in those two psukim up to the word vavayhu, which is the base of vavayhu. The reason why it's hazel. What's that? The reason why it's still one letter in a word. Kacha. Yeah, this is this is how we received it in the Zark edition. There's a connection to this. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure there's a lot of Torah there. I don't know it. <laughs> and I'm sure there is. Um, the name on the the Tfila Anabakayah is founded on this Shame Membez, which tells us that if the Shame Membez shows up in the creation of the world and the shame mem vase is luumas is in parallel to or in contrast to the shame ayin vase which is chesed then the shame mem vase is the shame of gvura and the shame of gvura has to do with limitation relating to the created world which is a world of limit and a world of, of lack and that means that the whole tefillah on abakayach is infused with this energy which we're going to get into but in order to really understand the next layer, right? The next step to understand. Okay, we understand. Like it's it's din, it's limitation. We spoke about that. What is the pu'ula of the midas hagvura within creation, though? We've said it in a very simple level of the world is a world of 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 limit. Ad kan we said right. Misha amar lo elamai die. It's a world that was created through a system of concealment, of hiding, which is the Mida of Din, and the limitation, and strictures, and, and all of this is true. But now we're going to go a, a step much deeper. And so let's journey together into the next section over here. Tchunas HaGvura. Why is it that HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world in such a way? What does this energy of Gvura within the world and within ourselves as created beings mean? What does it mean? How do we experience it? In Cain, he says, based on everything we're saying, like we said, this name of creation is rooted in Gevura. But to understand it properly, and the whole purpose and the whole spiritual root of this Tefillah, 
We have to really understand something fundamental, absolutely fundamental, about this Mida of Gvura the Mida Sadin. And he says, Ha Chesed, who are Elyon Upashat. The Mida of Chesed is what's called Ar Elyon Pashat. It's pure, elevated spiritual light. Nale, uplifted, and lifted beyond beyond any constriction of physicality or anything having to do with the nature of the world that we experience around this creation. It's just the realm of the spiritual. No conception of it. And from that lofty place of its purity, so then it comes down into this world. And along the way, it takes on Kalim, it becomes peace, and Sim Shalim, Bracha, Taiva, Chaim, Shalim. It becomes all different things, but in its root, it's just the godly revelation of kindness, and of light, and of, and of Chesed. But Lu'umasai, in contrast to this, Hagivura, Gvura relates to the world itself and its constrictions. And therefore, it's not for nothing that the created world is founded on the Midah of Gvura, like we said, Barashas Bara Elikim, that Elikim, so to speak, created the world, which is the way that Hashem reveals Himself through this Midah of Tzimtzum, of, of, of constriction. It's the light that appears as darkness. It's the light that appears and manifests the, the physical world around us, that this table starts here and ends there. It's a revelation of godliness, but the way that we experience it is actually um, embodied, is corporeal, is physical. With this understanding, Midas HaGevura, the whole thing of the Midah of Gevura, Asuka Betikana Kli Bachshirase. It's focused on the rectification of the vessels, of the vessels itself, of the created world itself, Bachshirase, and its preparation for the influx of that light of Chesed. So it isn't just the creation of this reality around us. Why was reality created in the first place? Why are we human beings, conscious people in physical bodies which start here and end there with all of the limitations of our lives, living within a world of limitation? For what purpose? It isn't just that the Midas Haddin allows that experience to become possible, but it actually teaches not just the creation of that reality, but the premise of that reality. It's a different thing. What is the premise of that reality? that it should become worthy, it should become ready, it should become prepared to be able to be the beneficiary, the recipient of the revelation of Hashem. It's a different thing. It's not just that the shame membase brings a world of limit into, into being and then it goes away. It works within limitation to help the realm of limit encounter the realm of limitlessness. Let, let's, let's see, it's a complicated idea. Let's, let's see how he, how he lays this out a little bit more. Chesed is just shefa, spiritual light flowing down, like we think of like a waterfall of spirituality, adirim ve'elyoinim, from top to bottom, so to speak, right? From the place of pure elokus, down, cascading through all the different realms, till the physical world. They're surrounding lights. Lights that are beyond, the lights that aren't in the vessel, move shot him. Outside of any quantification. Vahagvura, but the mid of gvura is within the realm of limit. Mizdacheches, its job is to purify creation. Umuraimemes and to lift up Esa Kalim, those Kalim, Mitsam Semes Hisa'ar, which then receive the light, and the job of Gvura within creation is like certain parts of our body takes in the food and then sends all the different nutrients to the place where it, it needs to go. It's a Gaval de Gamidas HaGvura that does that within our bodies. But it's also, like you said, it's rooted in Chesed, and it serves the purpose of Chesed. And so in that mushal, the Chesed is the eating, it's just food that's coming in. It's a total Shefa, but the, you know, the, the, the liver is not gonna, can't do anything with that food itself, right? But the stomach has these enzymes 
that are able to break down the food and send them into the bloodstream all the way throughout the body. That force is called the Midas HaGvura within. So Gvura is a delivery system? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Even more than delivery system, Gvura first propels the person to food. Then the eating of the food using this muscle is the chesed. And then that very mida within the person that enabled it to encounter food, to encounter chesed, takes that chesed, splits it up, and sends it all throughout the body. That's the mida of gvura within creation. Mitzam semes esa'ar o machadira oisai ala gvul brings it into that realm of limit, v'yecholas kabbalah sakli, and deals with the reality that this is how much the vessel can take and not more. And it understands, okay, this is what the food is, let's break it down, and we can give this cell this amount, and that cell this amount. It's, again, it, it's a mida that's shayich to kalim. It understands the mitzias of kalim. It's the, it's the mida that brought the concept of kalim into being, and it takes the R and it, and it sends it very specifically into all of these specific places. Lefikach, therefore, Timsa, we find that the primary revelation of Akadish Baruch Hu, within the limitation of this world, so Gevura is not just like what hides Hashem, it's much deeper than this. Sure, Gevura enables separate sparks of consciousness, which we call human beings, to exist within a world of limitation. That's true. And it seems to shut out Hashem. And it seems to, you know, we, we live in a world that, that, so to speak, Oilam hides Hashem away. But it is also the Mida that enables us to become ready enough, ra'oy enough, fitting enough to receive the light of Hashem. And it breaks up that revelation in such a way where we can, we can handle it. Where we can handle it. So you're saying that every, that every person... On whichever level they are, can access it and, and then let it be too much for them. That's right. That's right. It understands that there's a, there's a mitzis of kalim, and the purpose of the kalim wasn't to shut out the light. The purpose of the kalim was that, okay, now that there are kalim in a world of limitation to express Hashem's limitlessness, now we need to get the light in there, but we have to be aware that, I mean, there's a mitzis of kalim. It could only handle this much. Next week, we're going to talk about how to expand the kalim, but that's not gvura. Gvura deals with the creation of the kalim. And preparing the kalim to receive of the chesed what it can handle. Very deep. See, he says, if this is the case, this is what we see in the second bracha of Shemana Esrei, which is literally called Gevurais, right? Did you ever notice? The whole thing of the bracha of Gevura, what do we find? HaKadosh Baruch Hu doing all these amazing things. Ka'amru, ata gibar la'ilam Hashem. Hashem, you are a gibar. Gevura. Mechayim, mesim ata Hashem. You bring those that are dead back to life. Rav lo yishia, you save us. Mo'ir atol, you bring the dew. Mechal k'lachayim b'chesed, you provide us with life out of your kindness. Mechayim, mesim b'rachmim rabim. Bring those that are that are not alive to life. So I make noy flaming you support those that have fallen. Roifei choilim you heal those that are ill. Mater asurim you 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 unbind those that are that are that are prisoners. Umekayim amanasi liyshene afar and and to those that slumber in the dust you establish your your faithfulness and your amuna. Micha meicha who is like you bal gevurais master of gevura midai malach who is comparable to you melech memis and mechaye the one that brings. Death, Machaya, and the one that brings life, Umatsmiach Yeshua, and causes salvation to sprout. He says, Take a look at this bracha. The whole concept of this bracha, which is founded on the Mida of Gevura, is the concept of Hashem's kindness manifesting within the Mitzias, the reality of, of limit. Chizuka, the strengthening of that realm of limit, the iluya, and the elevation of that realm of limit. Chaylim, we talk about people who are sick, asurim, people who are prisoners, mesim and eskakim, people who are, are not alive, right? corpses, and eskakim, and people that, that, that can use salvation. Mischaskim, the midah of gvura, strengthens them. Ven emadim ikayach midas ha founded on this midah of gvura, it elevates them, establishes them. Ubepu olais, bal gvurais. And with these pu'ulais of Hashem, who in this case is the Baal Gevurais, 
their salvation sprouts. What's the concept of sprouting? From below to above, not above to below. Sprouting, which is gvura, the koyach of gvura, to propel something upward, to take the kalim and to prepare them, to ready them for, for a great light. At, yes. It's true. It's true. As I was reading that, I was thinking that also. The context of the bracha is gvura. So that's gvura Hashem. Right. You, right. So you had to say that there's some kind of shiluv, like like we spoke of the said before, between uh, chesed and gvura. But the ultimate context within which all of this chayim is being experienced is the realm of gvura. Right. Is the realm. I mean, that, that's what he's saying. He's saying that. The context of this bracha is not otherworldly stuff. It's, it's very this-worldly stuff. Gvura, like we said, can enable us to experience chesed, can ready the kalim to receive chesed, can enable those kalim that receive chesed to absorb the chesed properly. So there is chesed in the sugya, but the, but the context of it is, is the midah of, of din, the midah of gvura that relates to the physical realms. Okay, we're going too long. Let's just finish just this. We'll, we'll save the rest for next week. We'll start uh, from the second side of the page, but let's just finish this... Uh, this piece here. Ad chiyas ha-meisim v'ha-gu'ula ha-shleim v'ki-goyel chazak ata. Right? Chazak. Always referring to the midah of, of din. Ka'ach, he says, this is indeed the case. Midas ha-gvura hi ha-koyach ha-machshir ha-olam. It's the energy that brought the world into being in the first place, but then abides within the world. This pulsating energy within the created world that prepares the world. V'doy chek boy and pushes it his allies to grow it pushes the world to be what it was created to be which is a vessel yeah yes exactly that that's that's the kayak of gvura that wasn't just there when hashem created the world to begin with but is literally within the world each and every split second very very deep thing for there to be a world and for the world to serve its purpose and then he puts in parentheses, we're really not getting into this now, but this touches on what you said, which is Bechinas Habino, which is place of Chesed, or Hatshuva Vailoi, Besaid Ani Bino Likvura, En Kamakam Larach. We're not getting into that now. Afilu Bemuvanat TV, and he says, we see this like literally in the way that all of us want to function and want to propel ourselves forward on Yechilim Lurid says, Shekadei Shah Adam Yiskadei Bechayev, if we want to move ahead in life, there's got to be the meat of gvura there. It's not just chesed. You'd think that it would just be chesed, but it's not. There's got to be a tremendous amount of self-discipline, amal, toil, risanatsmi, self-control. There's got to be a measure of gvura. Gvura doesn't only need to be that which holds back or that which hides, conceals. That's the way we think about it. Midas haddin. But he's revealing a whole new way of looking at the midah of gvura where it's not pushing back it's pushing up making space. pushing forward making space focusing energy channeling koyach t- to move forward and here we finish there's nothing that can be attained in this world without that innate meat of gavura but he's saying a pella he's saying if you really think about it this whole world that seems so silent and so still all around us sun is setting and, uh, and the, the trees and the soil and everything looks pretty calm and everything looks pretty tame vis-a-vis the crashing light of chesed, which is overwhelming explosions, like we said. If you really understand it very deeply, it's mamish not. The world is pulsating. Because the very midah of gvura that allows nature to assume its limited orderly structure is actually working within all of nature push it, to push it up, to push it toward growth, to push it cor- toward gu'ula. And it's the kayach of gvura within us that pushes us to make use of this experience of the limited world to reveal the light of the limitless. That's what's happening in creation all the time. And he finishes, Zui t'chunas ha-gvura shi t'nua mi lemata lemala, as opposed to chesed, which is from above to below, like this literally waterfall. That's why Kriyas Yamsev is all Mayim, because Mayim is Chesed. Mayim is always Chesed, like Avram Avinu Yukach Ma'at Mayim, digging the well to reveal the water, which is the meat of Chesed. What is Gevura? If water is Chesed, what's Gevura? 
Huh? Yeah. Yes, but but what if it's water? So what's the symbol? Fire, the flame. So he says, This is what we see when we look at fire. What does fire do? It does the opposite of water. Water wants to go from above to below. What does the fire want to do? From below to above. Heat rises. Because Gavura rises. Because the Gavura within the world is pushing the world to rise. And this is the foundation of the Tefillah of Anabakaya. Unbelievable. It's channeling, awakening this energy inside of us. To prepare them for this great divine light. And this, even on the simplest level of what we do think is midas hadin, like a punishment, or any kind of suffering people go through, it's midas hadin. For what purpose? To help the person to grow. So Midas Hadin doesn't just mean the concealment of Hashem, the judgment of Hashem. Look deeper. What's the real side? What's the source? What's the secret um, compelling the Midah to come to manifestation? Is the energy of a Kodesh Baruch in a person's life that's helping this person to develop, that's helping this person along. The whole purpose of those is to, to, to rectify a person and to bring this person to his ascent and his clarification. So all of this is akdama, to akdama, of akdama, of this opening, just opening of the sugya of the of, of Anabukayah without even getting into the words, but just to understand generally speaking what this tefillah is what it's founded on, what energy we should perceive within the words, and then as Hashem, with this foundation, in the coming weeks, we're going to explore um, line by line and understand much more deeply based on this, how the tefillah can awaken within ourselves the inner midah of gvura and help us channel the midah of gvura within creation, which like fire, is compelling everything upward, 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 toward the light of chesed to receive the light of chesed and to allow us to inculcate the light of chesed into our lives. So Be'ez HaShem, next week we'll, we'll, we'll start from the last page over here, these two pieces, and then and then we'll start the actual tefillah. Be'ez HaShem.